Hello everyone, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is going to be on one of the end-to-end -end Power BI project which is going to be COVID-19 analysis and prediction. So as I had committed in my channel a couple of days back, a couple of weeks back, that I'll come up with a lot of end-to-end -end projects, especially in Power BI. And here we go. We have another project on COVID-19 analysis and prediction. I will talk about who is basically behind this particular dashboard. It's not me. I'll talk about the person who has created this project. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter to you who created this, it, be it me or be it somebody else, because you are getting the projects, end-to-end -end projects. Uh, you can use it for your self-practice. You can use it for your resume building activities, whatever it is. So let's get started. I'll quickly give you a sneak, uh, quick sneak peek about the project. So this is how the project looks like, COVID-19 analysis and dashboard. Uh, you can see a lot of slices has been created here. Month, year, date, country, province, number of days, number of data which we have, total number of cases, active cases. Of course, it's not live, but uh, I think it's more than enough for you to get started for, for your practice, right? We can see a good amount of, you know, uh, geographical map over here. We can see a chart here talking about the total cases, recovered cases, what's the mortality rate, what's the recovery rate, what are the trends and forecasting, like forecasting on the confirmed cases, on the recovered cases, deaths by date and forecast. So a lot more things has been done. And a similar thing has also been done for, uh, has been done for India, especially. You can see a little bit uh, changes in the structure in the in the format in the placing point of view you can see here we have total number of cases the cases on the left side and the slicers over here so we'll talk about this particular dashboard how has been how it has been created uh, where the idea came from where the data came from and who is the main person behind this uh, project so let's get started on this So the main, uh, uh, so Rohan Patil is the one who has created this project. Uh, and of course, I, I usually check out my LinkedIn page. Uh, I usually, you know, try to get talented people who have already done some end-to-end -end projects on Power BI and machine learning. And that's where I spotted Rohan's work. He had posted a couple of days back about this particular uh, dashboard. And I invited him that, how about I can showcase it to my students so that they can be beneficial as well. So here we go. So Rohan Patil, who currently works as a data science analytics intern at Project Pro. So he was the brain behind this particular dashboard. I'll quickly talk about how his journey was, how he has created this particular report. Apart from that, I'll also talk about some of his works. When I, when I started talking to Rohan, I, I kind of uh, got the idea that he has already done a couple of more machine learning projects as well. One of his projects is also a recommendation system, uh, which is like, of course, my video will be visible here, so you might not be able to see, but it's something like a recommendation system. If you just search for any movie, uh, let's say Avengers, uh, Ultimate Avengers, if you press enter, it will, it will scrape the data and get the data on the screen. And on top of that, it will also predict, uh, sorry, it will give you a recommendation. What are the recommended movies for you? Okay. So it's a very huge project, end-to-end -end project. I'll talk about this project someday, like some in some other video. Uh, let's get started with today's topic, which is going to be COVID-19 analysis. Okay. So as I discussed with Rohan, I got to know that he has basically scraped the data from this repository. I'll leave this repository in the description below so that you can check it out. This repository is, uh, is officially being maintained by some organization. I'm not pretty sure about the organization, but this is updated on a daily basis. Okay, you can see recently the data has been updated five hours ago. Okay, so when Rohan had done this project, it was around Jan 2021. So he had scraped the data and uh, accordingly, he had just scraped these data, the confirmed global data, deaths global data and recovered global data. 
Okay. I'll also leave Rohan's uh, account in the description below so that you can connect with him and talk to him in case you want. So these are the three data which he has captured. And then using some Python uh, scripts, he has done some kind of data cleaning activities. And we'll, I'll quickly give you a glance about the data cleaning activities and the data transformation which he has done. And then the final output of this Python script goes as an input to the Power BI script. Okay. I'll also talk about some of the enhancements which can be done in this. However, in this project, it's, it's just using some flat files. I'll talk about the automation part as well. So data cleaning, uh, you can always look at this data, look at this particular file and understand more, but I'll just quickly give you a breakthrough. So he has imported the data set, as I already told you, he has used three data sets. One of them is your COVID confirmed global, COVID deaths global and COVID recovered global. Okay. So these three confirmed global, deaths global and recovered global. And based on these three data, once he has, you know, uploaded the data and checked, he got to know that the dates are in columns. So we have to unpivot it. So he has already unpivoted the data so that the date comes to the row values and vice versa, transpose, right? So he has done that. And after that, you can see this is how the data looks like. The raw data confirmed. And, you know, and then what he has done, he has converted the new column to dates. Simple, simple things he has performed here, renaming the values and then investigating the null values. So, you know, it, it is one of the integral parts, right? How to deal with null values. We already know it, it is a very vital step in data analysis projects, right? So he has investigated the null values and then he has dealt with the null values. You can see he has done fill NA. That means he is filling it with zeros. Uh, sorry, he's filling it with, okay. He's, he's just randomly filling the data with something and then printing shapes before the join. And then once, once his data is ready, once he has done with the null, null data analysis, he has basically combined the data. He has done merge the data using some left outer join and right outer join. Okay. You can check out this file for getting more information. And then he has done a full join. And finally, he has added the month and the year as a new column. All these kind of activities comes under your data cleaning, data transformation activities, right? So very easy to learn. He has also added the, uh, you know, documented it well so that you understand. And then going forward, he has just, you know, he's using the final output in the Power BI file. So I'll just quickly go to the down part. So this is how he has finally created the data. And then he's using this data as an input to the Power BI. So you can see coronavirus Power BI. Okay. So, and India is basically just where country equals to India. That's it. So he has created another data set where country equals to India. Now, if I just go back to the Power Query Editor, let, let us go back. Okay, so it might fail because I don't have the CSV file in the same path. So it might fail. If it fails, we'll just skip this part and we'll just cover the dashboard. Yeah, I knew it, it will fail. Okay, doesn't matter. You can just check it out. I will place these files in a particular location. You can check it out. So here what he has used is he has used some slicers, total number of cases. You can just click on the, you know, visualizations and check what he has done. Let me go back to the global part. Okay, my Power BI is a little bit slow. So just, just two minutes. Okay, in the meantime, it's getting loaded. So the dashboard is ready, guys. So you, you can just check this dashboard. You can explore how, what has been done, what not has been done. Change the theme, change the pattern, change the, you know, boxes to here and there. Play around with it and, you know, create your own version. Don't, don't really copy paste from Rohan's uh, work directly, but yeah, just play around with it. I leave the PBX file, I leave the CSV file, everything. 
I, I leave the GitHub repository of Rohan's profile itself so that you can just check out his uh, work. And uh, yeah, see, I, I, honestly speaking, not it has been, no, I mean, no fancy work has been done. Measures also very simple measures has been created. For example, I'll show you one of the measures. Let's say active cases. So active cases, like how many cases were active based on your filters. So let me just show you. So you can see sum of daily confirmed minus sum of deaths minus sum of recovered is basically your active cases. Very simple, simple logics. You can see these boxes are your measures. You can just click on it and it will show you the formula, right? The formula is simple formulas. That's it. Sum of confirmed daily divided by the date is basically your average confirmed cases. And then he is using here the number of active cases, all these things, active cases, deaths, all these things he's using here. So that's it. That's it for today's video, guys. I'll keep it very simple. I'll I'll give this particular file to you so that you can explore. Yeah, one, one good thing I'll talk about is the, the time series part. So you can see confirmed cases by date and forecast. So all these six graphs, no, not six graphs. These three graphs is basically your forecasting graphs. Now, if you don't know about time series forecasting and Power BI, I'll just give you a quick hint. But I also have a time series forecasting uh, video on my channel you can just go through it so in case you want to create some forecasting i'll click on this visualization forecasting has already been done but i'll just show you how it has been done okay for some of you uh, see basically you click on this dashboard uh, click on this visualization go to the analytics pane this one once you click on the analytics pane you should be able to see a forecast there will be a forecast and there will be find anomalies so click on forecast in case you are not able to see this forecast that means you are using a lower version of power bi go to options and settings go to options and then let, let it open it it takes time and then go to preview features and then here somewhere you will be able to see anomalies and time series forecasting. Just check on it. I'm already using the latest one, so I'm not able to see. So this is how you can fix it. Okay. So here I'm going to forecast. I'll just explain you what has been done. Forecast length 15. That means I want 15 data points. For example, you are having Jan 1 till December 31. And it's a daily data. So when you're asking for forecast length 15, that means you want the next 15 days. So Jan when next year till Jan 15 next year. That's the forecasted values. Okay. Ignore last days. Ignore last days means, for example, you have data till 31st of December, right? When you are forecasting, you are getting the forecasted values, but you are not able to match. Like you, do, you are not able to know that whether what's the actual versus predicted, right? So what we do is, let's say we have data till 31st December. If we want to check the actual versus predicted for December and then do a future forecast of January, just try to imagine, I'll give you a small example to help you explain. Now, for example, I have data from Jan, 1st Jan, 1st Jan, 2019, 2nd Jan, 2019 and it goes on, goes on till 31st December 2019. Okay. Now, if you do a simple prediction of next 15 days, that means your data points as your forecast length as 15. That means you are forecasting it for Jan, 1st Jan 2020 till 15 Jan 2020. But for this, for this data, you don't have the real values, right? How can you understand whether your forecasting is correct or not? So what we do is we do a ignore last five mains. You are doing a prediction on 26 December 2019 till 15 days, till 10th January 2020. So five days. And then here 10 days, 15 days you are doing. So you're getting my point, right? So in case your data looks like this, 
and let's say your data looks like this till December, right? December 2019. So tomorrow, like if you are just doing a normal forecast, your forecast will something like this, right? But you are not able to understand whether it is correct or not. So if you are using a ignore last, that means five points. That means you also want a prediction on this data. So this is how it will look like. You getting my point? And 15 means till January 10th. So till January 10th. So here you can understand, okay, for these five days, the actual is something like this and the prediction is something like this. So you can understand whether your forecasting is correct or not, right? That's the main feature of this ignore last. Confidence interval 95% is basically telling you that with 95% confidence, your forecast will remain within that range. You can see there is a range here, right? It looks like this, looks like this. You can see upper bound and lower bound. That means 95% means with 95% confidence, we can tell that the forecasted values will remain within that upper bound and lower bound. 99% means the boundary will increase. You can see, I think it's loading. Oh, it. I haven't applied it. Just check out the length it will increase. See, it increased because 99% chances are there, it will fall within that. So obviously the boundary will increase, right? And this is how it is. 95 is a good point to use. Seasonality, that means from the past, how many days, like you are using a 15 day seasonality here. Okay. So internally, what kind of algorithm is used and all those things I have covered in that another video, just check out that video. And that's it. And all the other graphs are very simple graphs, which has been used, either it's a line chart or an area chart or a bar graph. And these are some of the, you know, if you want to check something, just click on the visualization. Let's say like this, click on this visualization and check what has been done here. See, this is the average confirmed daily. This one, you click on this and it will tell you what is this. This is a measure which has been created and what is the formula of it? Okay, confirm daily divided by the date, right? This is how it looks like. Again, in India also, simple things has been done. So that's it for today's video. I'll, I like to keep it very simple. I don't want to extend it for two hours, three hours, something like that. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you liked it. I'm also working on a couple of more end-to-end -end projects. I'll keep sharing with you. I also have an end-to-end -end machine learning project ready and one more project by Rohan. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just working on it. I'll just keep recording and keep publishing for you all. In case you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe the channel. And if you have any recommendation that if you want any specific video that, hey, can you work on this particular video? Let me know in the comment section, guys, and I will just check your comment and quickly work on it. That's it for today's video, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.